Okay, thank you. So I'm going to, to talk about uh, agri-semantics, which is a relatively new concept, which as you could imagine is the mix, let's say, of some agricultural concepts plus semantics. That is where, let's say, this community is meeting up. It's, I said it's a relatively new concept, and actually behind this there is a large community. This is not a concept that I created myself or so, it's, it's, it's already a big community which is behind it. And the purpose of my, my talk is to, to make you, first of all, aware of the opportunities that we have in this, in this community. Briefly, we, we, we discussed, even Pierre also mentioned quickly that uh, this is a large community which is also taking advantage of, this, of the technologies that we are using, semantic web, ontologies, and this sort of thing. So I'm going to, to show a couple of examples there and, and so that you could see where else we could also reach out. So, be, but before entering, let's say, into, into the, the details about the, the type of work that, we, that I'm doing in this community, a quick review of the status of, uh, of what's happening there. First of all, this, this community is, 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 as many other communities, also dealing with the limited number of versatile tools and resources. Tools, we have plenty of tools, plenty of databases, but you know that the appropriate tools or the appropriate, let's say, databases to really harvest knowledge from all the experiments and stuff like that is, is really limited. That's one of the major, major issues as well in this community. Another interesting thing that is happening also here is that not only, let's say, academia, I mean, research institutes and universities are interested on in this topic, but also industries investing a lot of, of, of money in this. And they are starting to work, work together. There are some workshops, some uh, uh, activities that happen, for instance, at the EBI and stuff like that. And another issue that uh, is, is typically seen here, as well as in other communities, is the lack of governance. By lack governance, I mean uh, identifying who is the data owner, who is the data responsible, who, who we should contact in case of we need, for instance, some updates or certain type of data. So as a result of, let's say, this, this list, of, list of items, it's difficult for these people to share their data. It's all probably obvious. And this is, of course, as a result, we can also, it's hardly hard to compare the data from different studies. Because in this community, they are not only working on one specific crop or one specific species. And so they want to cross data from one species to the other to learn, let's say. So this is, of course, st starting to create more silos, for instance, new IDs, new data schemas. So this is cost inefficient at the end. So then the question was and is, whether the semantic web technologies can be of any help in for this for this community. And when I'm talking about agriculture, you have seen in the title I also put food and nutrition because this is actually quite linked. And agriculture is sort of the at the very beginning of the, this this chain. Yeah, just as a recap, we know that the semantic web has been promising a lot. Yeah, like this is going to bring a web of with a meaning. Yeah. And we will be able to search, aggregate, combine, and eventually to analyze our data and to cope, for instance, with the diversity of formats, the identity crisis, and these sort of things. However, we, well, I mean, at, at least the people in this room, we know that there are plenty of limitations in terms of uh, not only technological <coughs> limitations, but there are also still new standards almost every, every month. So it's difficult to cope with this. But anyway, we know that this is working. We have shown, we have seen plenty of examples where we can see that this type of technologies even with the, the limitations that we have, are working and are already starting to show more and more good examples. So then the question was, can we apply it in, in agriculture or for, for the sake of dealing with agricultural data? And when I'm, when I'm talking about, about agricultural data, of course, it's the data that is produced and used in agriculture, right? Like in the field experiments, for instance, environmental conditions, where we are, let's say, not only dealing with the temperature, humidity level, and these sort of things, climate and weather conditions too, lab experiments, observations. So as you can see, it's, it's a very long list of, of the diversity of, of data that is also, that this community is busy with. So and this is just one small example of one of the big trends in this community, which is called digital farming. You know that many companies, many people are going into the digital era, let's say, or digital world. And agriculture is also doing the same. So they are investing in, in having new machines, better machines that are capturing data. So, and at the end, you know, data is like our food, I mean, for us, for our community. And they are putting, for instance, sensors, cameras here to, to, to measure the level of the temperature, humidity, level of carbon uh, or certain compounds, right? 
there are in the picture in the middle you can see also there are drones that are taking pictures of, of the different fields to see how this is how how for instance certain crops are growing in certain areas in this in this screenshot you can see for instance this is this has been taken to measure for instance the chlorophyll stress and, and to identify for instance in which areas this could be really useful so and again this is data and somebody has to analyze this data we need to there is where let's say we are a, a sort of appearing right there is another type of challenge also in this community which is the type of species that we are dealing with is you you probably have will with thought will will think that uh, okay in agriculture you will only deal with with rice for instance no 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 that's not true we are also also dealing with the pathogens around rice also that with the species that are related to rice so as you can see it's it's relatively complex and for each one of those species we need to integrate the data not only the, at the sequence level but also the annotations so that means that we need a, a different way of, of let's say capturing the data the specific areas where the semantic web, uh, semantic web has been applied so far in this big community and I'm, I'm working a, a couple of fields there is for instance in phenotyping and in the field trials I, I show I have shown an, an example of this drone that has taken this picture just there are some colleagues doing, of course, genome analysis for, for, for certain species and they need to, for instance, do annotations. They need to comply to a certain ontologies, a certain terminology, so that they could share the data and cross across different, let's say, species. Omics in general, proteomics, transcriptomics is also a big area where these people are already using. Modeling, okay, there are, there's a little example there, but there are, for instance, ex nice examples where they are taking, let's say, the protein and gene interactions to, to deal with ontologies too. Pathway analysis and the classic, let's say, things. And this is actually bringing to a relatively new concepts of the next generation of agriculture, where because they are not any, they are starting to rely much more on, let's say, the computer scientists to do their analysis. So, but the good news is that we are not alone, <laughs> as you all know, and there are actually, as I mentioned, a lot, a lot of communities, a lot of groups, a lot of meetings happening here. I'm happy that uh, Pierre is also in, the, in this in this hackathon because then we can discuss maybe a little bit more around this and publicize it and and tell you more about the opportunities that are here. This is again, and this is not a comprehensive comprehensive list, but you can recognize, for instance, the fair people is also involved here, and people from the FAO, I mean, big, big organizations as well as small organizations are dealing with it. So now going to, let's say, what happened so far, at least in, in, in the field that I've been working, as I mentioned, we are, this, this community has already been producing plenty of ontologies, like for instance, the plant ontology, we are also using the gene ontology, but there are specific ontologies, like for instance, the trait ontology to capture the traits or the observations of the plants, like for instance, the color of the leaves, the size of the leaves, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So agriculture is really reaching this level where they are going to the millimeter, let's say, to 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 collect the information. So all this information we've been creating, we created a prototype with around one million triples, let's say, and we started to compile also a library of uh, queries that are at the end, of course, translated into SparkQL, and we are generating. And well, actually, we have behind the screens we are using Steel Virtuoso. We are sometimes not happy with it because there are some some limitations but uh, yeah anyway I will be happy also to discuss with uh, with you about this the issues about we, we have but anyway so uh, we so far we, we, we compiled this list of libraries of queries and the, the users have started to do their annotations by creating nano publications capturing the annotation themselves the facts who annotated when it was annotated and the nice thing of this is that we can now cross data uh, uh, across, let's say, different uh, species. Like, for instance, the people that are working with wheat are also interested in the results of, of the experiments that, of the people that were working in rice to compare what is happening there, what's the name of the trait, the name of the species, are they, the same pathogens interfering in this or not. So thanks to this, let's say, we are now days able to do this. Regarding the, the trends, I mentioned that, okay, this is a big, big trend because, yeah, normally the, the, the agricultural sector has been always sort of delayed compared to the, let's say, human research and other fields where, we, of course, there is much more funding and much more organizations dealing with it because it's, we have to save first the humans and maybe then the plants. But one of the trends, of course, and something that is happening there is that we are continuing, let's say, mimicking or copying what is happening in the human research area. So 
we are trying to always see what is what are the results there and try to compare can we also translate for instance these algorithms these uh, libraries and to see whether it's also working in agriculture another interesting thing that is happening there is there's as i already mentioned in terms of digital farming people are starting to use a lot of sensors to to let's say capture all since let's say the the the, the researchers put the seed into the, the the small plot in the labs until let's say the the plant has already been flowering or so. And this is happening in something that is called hyper care farms, where they have plenty of cameras, they are recording all this data that actually at some point somebody has to analyze it. I mentioned at the beginning the data governance part. So there are also small communities working on it and uh, the fair community is also supporting it. I and mean, in terms of how, how we could identify the ownership of the data, the, the stewardship and stuff like that, well, fairness. Uh, maybe to stress a little bit that nowadays we are entering into more the, the analytics part, right? And in, in, in the sense that it's, it's more than reporting the number of triples that we have in the system, but it's really coming up with questions that are answering real biological questions. And that's, that's still a challenge because to convince the people that they have to use these sort of new technologies is not easy. It's, 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 it's taking time. So that's why we're spending time in creating nice visualizations, nice systems. Otherwise, the users will not simply use it, right? Another interesting thing, if, and if, if somebody's interested to discuss during this week, is about blockchain. Probably some of you have heard about this new technology. And that is also starting to enter into the agricultural sector, basically to to support the traceability or the provenance of, of, of the, say, the, the facts or the, these sort of things, so, and to increase the trust, right? So, just to quickly finalize, and this is also linked to the discussion that we had this morning, how this, the, the hackathons have been contributing. I already mentioned that thanks to the hackathon, we were able to, to, to create this global community and to share, let's say, similar motivations. Also, to start new collaborations with the different with different colleagues. There you can recognize uh, Crick Chang is here. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that from our last hackathon. But the important message here is that we are not reinventing the wheel. Thanks to, let's say, the, the organizers, we are sitting together here. Probably our mailing list is not that active as we would expect. But uh, anyway, we are still in contact with, with some people. We are visiting sometimes from, from institutes, and then we are trying to learn from each other. So that's that's really, really good. And that, that's why I would like to especially th thank the, the organizers and the supporting organizations. So now, what I learned myself <laughs> from this distinct, uh, from these many hackathon, hackathons, first of all, uh, a lot of the Japanese culture, the food, the drinks, and as I mentioned also, I, I, I managed to, to organize a couple of hackathons learning, I mean, from the, from the experience that we have had here. So. And that's it, so thank you very much.